Hi, this is Annabella, and recently I read a quote from a well-known black and white photographer named John Sexton, who developed his skills working in the darkroom alongside Ansel Adams, perhaps the most influential photographer of the 20th century. Anyway, the quote goes like this. I truly believe that 51% of my images, success takes place in the darkroom. Well, here's what I believe. Today, 51% of all digital images, success takes place in Photoshop. Right now, Photoshop is the easiest and yes, the fastest way to take good photos and transform them into great photographs using simple, straightforward, raw conversion and photo editing techniques. And in this free video, I'm going to show you why and what this means to your photography. And more important, I'm going to show you how you can do it too using Photoshop and you don't need an expensive camera, you don't need a supercomputer and you definitely don't need fancy computer skills. But let's back up for a minute. You see, when I was fresh out of university, after completing my degree in photography, I got my first job in the industry working as a technician for a professional photographic lab, which for a photographer was like being a kid in a candy store. I had access to the best photographic equipment money could buy. I'm talking about millions of dollars worth of high-tech machinery right at my fingertips. From high-resolution film scanners, digital LVT film recorders, to large format LED photographic printers, just to name a few. And here's the verdict that I kept coming back to. No matter what equipment I used, the difference between a good print and a bad one came down to one influencing factor, Adobe Photoshop. In image after image, Photoshop did two things really well. It helped me convert everyday images into high quality commercial prints and it helped me restore cherished memories for family photo albums. Of course, I suppose if you can only do two things well, those are two pretty good things. So let's start off by talking about why photos don't always turn out as planned and what you can do right now to rescue them. But first, let me ask you a question. You're a passionate photographer, right? You want to travel the world with your favourite camera, taking great photos, capturing those magic moments of your children at play, and preserving your family's memories for future generations. And you've seen the latest photographs from big name photographers in our industry over the last few months. So as a photographer, can you tell me the last big, and I mean big name photographer that didn't use Photoshop? Exactly, and there's a reason for that. Photoshop is more than just a piece of software. It's a place where creativity and ideas are realized and rewarded. In essence, Photoshop is the digital equivalent of the traditional darkroom. I have fond memories of my first makeshift darkroom squeezed into my bathroom. Photography has come a long way since then, and although the tools and technologies have changed, the fundamentals of photography still remain the same, but with one exception. In the 1930s and 40s, photographers needed to know how to get the best out of their film through traditional processing and printing techniques. In the 1970s and 80s, photographers began to spend less time film processing and printing with the assistance of services offered by professional photographic labs, like the one I worked in. And now, with so many digital devices at our fingertips, anyone is capable of capturing high-resolution imagery with relative ease, and the concept of creativity has somewhat been lost on the masses. The bottom line is, the act of creating a photograph doesn't stop with your digital camera. You still need to process your photos, even though we're not using chemicals or darkrooms. The other day, I actually had somebody tell me that they're a purist, and that they don't use image editors like Photoshop. Well, I asked them then, do you use grad filters, polarizers, or different ASAs of film? And you know what? They didn't really respond because they knew I had them. The fact is, your images shouldn't suffer. You should make them the best that they can be because photography is a creative medium that empowers artistic expression. Here's a perfect example of the role creativity can play when things just don't go right on assignment. At first, this photograph may appear to be quite straightforward, but in reality it's not, and that's because I only had one opportunity to capture this photograph, hanging out of an open cockpit, rubber band propelled, home-built aircraft flying at 4,000 feet. And if that wasn't a tall order, by the time we reached our remote destination, we only had enough fuel for one pass before we needed to head back to the airfield. So after planning to photograph Mount Lindsay at sunset, the reality was we actually turned back half an hour prior in order to make it back before dark, ruining any chance of capturing the perfect sunset. So what I actually captured was this. 
and I admit whilst the perspective from which it was photographed is impressive, the photograph is not, and unfortunately the